So what I've got going on here is I'm making um, my own PCB board for a project that I'm working on. And um, I have my design here, my circuit. Yeah, I, I, I'm proud of it. I think it looks pretty good. I've done some other ones like this before, but this is this is like a full. I don't know. I'm I'm proud of this one. Don't need to go into it. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this transferred over to uh, copper so that I can etch it. So I have my cutouts, um, the circuits that I need. They're, they're printed with very heavy toner on transparencies. I have found that this method works the best for me. Um, a lot of the a lot of the different instructions that I've looked at for making your own circuit boards and doing your own etching using the toner transfer method uh, have used like a waxy type of paper, like a photo paper. You know, it's got, got glossy on one side, and then you would you would print this onto the glossy side of the photo paper and do the same technique here, uh, except you would add a step of soaking your your PCB board with the paper still stuck to it in warm water for different amounts of times. Uh, just so as you know what the paper soaks up water and then you can brush off the paper But I found that this method actually works pretty well the one that I'm about to use I use uh, mainly a an iron for like ironing clothes, but I've also found that a Laminator for Doing lamination sheets on paper actually works pretty well as well And you can get a good contact on one of those so today I think I'm gonna actually use a combination of both because I really want this to to work out well I want it to be solid I want it to be very good because this is for a project that I've been working on for a very, very, very long time and I've been kind of teaching myself PCB making and etching and uh, circuit design and, and things like that and working with uh, programming and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, really kind of honing my skills I guess um, and learning new things in the process. So the first thing I need to do here, I've already cut my, my PCB board to size. What I need to do is sand it. I'm going to use a very, very uh, fine sand, uh, fine grit. I think this is 200 something. Um, it's very, very thin, or very, very fine. Not too fine, but fine enough. I've used some really heavy grit stuff before, and it just tears up the board, and it leaves a lot of um, marks. I like to sand it in all four directions, up, down, left, right, both ways diagonally. Because um, it really gets a good, helps to get the uh, good grip for the toner. It's okay. one side. Now I'd like to make sure that the surface is brushed off before I... I've had instances where the powder scratched the living bejesus out of one side of this. And we flipped it over and rubbed it on this side. And the other side was just gouged out. It was useless. I always have a problem when I get to the ends. Okay. Um, what needs to happen now? I gotta wash this thing with soap and water. That's my next favorite step. A lot of people say, okay, just clean it with acetone. It's probably a good idea, yeah, but it's not necessary. Um, I like the soap and water and sponge method better because it really gets into all those little grooves that you got, and it's important to get all of the grease and all of the dust off of here, or else the toner won't uh, stick to those portions. It's like trying to paint over dirt. So. There's, uh, I'm going to go wash this inside. No need to take a video of that, I suppose. All right. Magic. I have uh, washed this bad boy. 
and I'm trying not to touch it too much with my hands because the oils from your hands will um, also cause it not to stick very well. I mean, you don't have to be too worried about it, but try to be careful. So I've washed it really nice and, and good. There's that nice glean off of it. Now, why am I doing both sides? Because obviously I have two bits to to uh, transfer on there. The front top portion and the and the the, uh, the front portion and the, uh, the the actual tracings themselves. I like to do the labels of the parts in the copper itself rather than etch the copper and then put the uh, the, the toner on the silk to do like a silk screening or not on the silk on the on the board to do like a silk screening. I I prefer to look I like the look of the copper. That's just a personal preference on my end. All right, so. I have an iron here, a really nice heavy duty iron, set to the highest setting, um, turning the steam off, it's nice and heated up. Now in the meantime, I've got this guy heating up right now. Uh, it is on the thickest setting, and it's just heating without you know, the wires in the back of it. <laughs> so here's what, what I like to do, with a nice, this paper towel's a little bit damp, and that's okay for me. I'm going to go ahead and set the iron straight on that bad boy. And I'll let it sit for maybe about five seconds or so. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get this guy ready, the tracings. And I'm going to make sure that I get the right side, the correct side to put down. Okay, it's usually the side that's the dullest. The most dull. And I don't have any air in my compressor. Shart. All right, well, to use a towel, I'll try to use the shart, even more shart, knocking stuff down. Try to use a lint-free towel if you can. You don't want to leave lint on there either. It's just like grease and all the other fun things. All right, let's take that bad boy off and slowly lay this down onto the board. Make sure you line up your edges, make sure you line up your stuff. I should be wearing gloves or using paper towels to do this right now, but you want to hold it down. Rip this paper towel in half, and there we go. I like to give it a good pressing. Now this board's going to be hot. It's going to be really, really hot, so be careful not to touch it with your fingers. The purpose, what I'm trying to do now is to get some of the toner to stick to the board, to adhere to the board so I don't have to worry about... Um, the toner not sticking, I guess you can say. Now, with one finger holding it, I'm going to take the iron and start to iron on the rest of it. Now, the, the, the trick that I've noticed, one of the things that I've noticed is that the thicker the toner you have, the more likely it is to heat up underneath the iron and smear without you seeing it. So be really careful about, about this portion. You want to use some pressure, but not too much, because once the toner starts to melt, it will smear. See, I already got some smearing right there, and I'm gonna gonna have to fix that bad boy. So, I think this is where I will stop. Well, let's get this middle portion just in case. I don't trust my clumsy hands with this part of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and wait. No, I'm gonna go ahead and put the other side on. Now, typically, what you'd want to do is take, wait, you know, do one side, um, drill a hole so you can line up your your parts layer, so to speak. Um, but that's not what I'm going to do because the board is really hot, and because I'm changing my technique just a little bit to accommodate for the trans or the. Um, Laminator. Okay. So that's where that guy is. Okay. By Jove, I think he's got it. Let's heat this guy up just a little bit more. So I want this to stick.
Oh, that's really hot. Okay. I think we're about as good as we're going to get there now. My thing turned red, so we're... The light on the inside turned red, so we're good. Let's go ahead and trash these paper towels and put my iron. Set the iron aside so I don't burn myself. And I'm going to go ahead and chop off the last little bits of this um, transparency here. Couldn't have found a duller razor blade, could I have? Yeah. I've got the transparencies uh, basically glued to both sides. It's kind of a fun effect. It's like magic. Anyway, <laughs> I'm getting carried away. Watching the video when I should be paying attention to this. All right, there we go. Pass this guy through. It's just, just very simple. Just pass it through. Now, the way that this thing is set up, there's a heating roller on, I think it's the, it's either the top or the bottom. I want to say it's on the top. I think the heating roller's on the top. And then there's like a really kind of hard, spongy, almost like a rubbery type of material um, as the other roller. And that kind of forms to all the nooks and crannies of whatever you're passing through there and, and, and laminates it nicely. And, here, that's what it's doing with this top of this board. It, it forms to the shape of the board and then laminates the circuit on there. Now, you kind of have to have to pass this through a few times going different directions. So take the board, pass it through one way, take it out, flip it 180, and then flip it 90, flip it 180 again, uh, and then flip it over and do the same thing. So I do like to do every corner diagonally. I don't know why. But I should probably do perpendicularly as well. <clears throat> Doesn't hurt to pass it through. I also uh, will occasionally, like before I flip it over, I'll go ahead and you know make sure to, to use a sponge or something or a paper towel to rub on there really fat, you know, really hard to make sure that that toner is actually sticking to that paper uh, board. I'm just gonna stop talking and perform. I'm losing my words, paying attention to other things. Now the circuit's the most important to me, so that's what I'm focusing on right now. Oh, I'm out of the picture. Look at that. Move back a bit. There we go. This thing is hot when you pull it out, so it's not like it's cold. So I had to modify this guy. Um, I had to cut out back portion here so that I was able to get in and get the board. Um, there was a smaller space, and it just, you know, it's because it's meant for 8.5 by 11 paper. So, you know, but I, I noticed it worked really well. I got a spare one, and voila, can't complain. It's actually, I mean, it's a lot safer than the iron. Um, I guess you're not really smearing anything doing this method. The other way, you can just get too heavy-handed and only mess the thing up. And you have 
have to sit there and dig out the areas that kind of fuse together and yeah, it's kind of a pain. See, always try to do it right the first time. Then you have less mistakes to fix later. <laughs> no, always do it right the first time if you can. Give them the tools that you're allowed. That's just going to get a quick one. I don't want to worry about the bottom. You know what? I forgot about this thing too. I always sometimes would use the plastic ruler to go over it. the uh, heater was on. I mean, both portions are supposed to be hot, but, you know, it is what it is. See, I'm, now I'm passing it through again, but I'm doing it at the perpendicular angles now. Yeah, I, I, it goes through a lot. It's going to go through what? Eight times each side. Hmm. I don't like to go that short of a board through there because it's kind of a pain to get out and it almost feels like the bottom side is the one that's getting heated. So this is the most important part is to get even this toner transfer on there. Now you can fix it. You can um, if you uh, if there are spots that <clears throat> really didn't adhere all that well, um, or parts that are completely missing, you can always fix it with a sharpie, fine tip to sharpie. Heck, you could even just I mean if you really are just in a hurry, and you have a simple enough circuit, you could just draw it on the circuit or on the on the copper with sharpie and, and etch it that way in the. Um, in the same chemicals. Uh, I've done it with a, I took a uh, piezo speaker out of a watch and used that to make a pressure activated like door entry doorbell sort of thing. So it's kind of like, you know, when you walk into the store, you step on those mats and it opens the door. That's kind of just what I made, but it, it triggers a, that was easy button, that might work use that as a transistor. It wasn't very hard. It was fun. Okay. I think I'm going to have to be happy with this. And now I like to put it on metal or something to cool fast. So while that's cooling, I'm going to clean up and start the next part of the videos. Well, now that we're all cleaned up here, I'm really uh, looking forward to taking this off to see how well it stuck. Um, it's been a while since I've done some uh, some toner transfer, so let's see how first this one did. Let's find a good edge to pull up, and da, 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 da. Well, it looks like it did pretty good. There's a few missing edges and stuff. No, actually, it doesn't. No, I think it all got on there. Yeah. Okay. Now let's peel off layer two. Oh, wow. I don't think I've ever had a toner transfer that's been this good before. Look, almost all of the toner. Actually, I think all but one little tiny speck, one little tiny speck is still there. It all made it to the board. Perfect. Left myself some room. I think we're going to be pretty good here. Uh, it's going to be a little, the holes are going to be off on this side but I'm okay with that because all this is is a general guideline for me I don't 
necessarily need to see it like that. It's a prototype. So, okay, good. We're going to get to the etching now. Um, this is a very good, well, there's one little tiny spot I need to fix on here. Right up in there. Looks like a bunch of, uh, some of the traces kind of got bunched together. So I got to, I got to scrape those off with an exacto knife real fast and then we'll get to the, uh, and we'll get to the etching portion of it, which should be awesome. Okay, so there's several things that you need for etching. They're very basic things. One thing that you may, might not be so common in some households without pools, but it's easy to find at Home Depot. You need hydrogen peroxide. I would, um, I would prefer getting something that is not stabilized. You'll look on the label. Here where the active ingredient says hydrogen peroxide, uh, there's the video, and this one says stabilized. I prefer non-stabilized, but you know what, there really isn't much of a di difference. I see the other one just acts a little bit faster than the stabilized stuff. You're going to need muriatic acid for pools. You can find this at the, uh, let's, any hardware store. I find it at the, the local one around here, um, and I find it in the garden section, along with the pool stuff. You need one container and a second container. Uh, you, the one container needs to be able to fit in the other. Preferably, I would like this container to be large. But this works. You need a few uh, ready paper towels, gloves. Now, you don't really necessarily need gloves. It's not like muriatic and hydrogen peroxide actually burn you. But the stuff will stain you yellow, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> and of course you need your circuit. The last thing that you need, you need a pot of extremely hot water. This water has been sitting, this was already hot tap water, it's uh, four cups of it. It was hot tap water put in the microwave for four minutes in a Pyrex glass. Um, <clears throat> The hotter, the better, only because it stays hotter longer, and it uh, it acts better. So now I'm putting my gloves on, praying that they don't tear, because my hands are big old, big old fat hands. Okay. All right, so we're good. All right, now here's the gist of it. The whole reason you have two containers here is because one of them holds the hot water, and what that does is it heats up your etching fluid. Okay, so... I'm going to go ahead and put hot water to fill maybe a third of this container. Set my hot water off to the side. Oh, I'm sorry, you also need a measuring cup. I just basically took a, an old hydrogen peroxide container, um, cut it, and then where, and then I made a, um, a, a full mark and a halfway mark with pinholes, so I know exactly how much I'm pouring in here. Place your second one so it floats in the water. So it's sitting in there nice. Nice and pretty. Now, a mix for this. One part hydrogen peroxide. Where's my... Here it is. I'm just going to use the rest of it. One part hydrogen peroxide. Now, let that, let that stew around in there for a second. Now, see, you're kind of doing like a double boiler almost, and you're heating your etching fluid in here. So it's one part hydrogen peroxide. To one half part. So it's basically two to one. Two parts hydrogen peroxide to one part muriatic acid. And I did too much there. So I'm going to put this back in here. I am of the one-time use club. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I feel like this should only be used, this solution should only be used once. A lot of people say that you can save it. You might be able to, but you know what, I think I'm going to wait till I actually empty, empty a gallon of the muriatic acid to use that gallon container to save up the old stuff and maybe reuse it later on. I don't know. All right, so all I'm doing right now is heating it up. Now, let's go ahead and drop our thing in. And this is where we need patience. Go ahead and aim the camera down, and we'll just see. I'm just going to sit here and do this, because um, that's really all I can do. Let's get a good... Oh my gosh, I need to learn this. There we go.
but you'll see the water start to turn like a bluish color, bluish green, mostly blue. That is the copper oxidizing and being washed off. Hydrogen peroxide, from what I understand, uh, oxidizes the copper and then the muriatic acid washes it away. Now, this is at the point where I like to stop, let it sit, change out the water. So I'm going to go do that real fast, put fresh hot water in. You don't want to do it too fast because you don't want to splash everything around. Just nice fluid motion. No pun intended. I did uh, forget to mention that I'm doing this next to a fan <laughs> mounted on the wall. Uh, it's been running this entire time. Uh, you should probably do this in a well-ventilated area. It's always a good idea. Look at that. Look how fast that copper is coming off now. So this is where I'm going to grab a tool to pick it up. So even though I'm wearing gloves, I still don't want to put my hands in there. See how well the circuit side is doing. That's really what I'm concerned about, right? One side, if, as long as this side's good, then the other side will be just fine. Now I really want to set this in and make sure that I get in between all of those little grooves. While I'm doing this, go ahead and reposition that. Over here. Haha, oh, look at me, I'm making a mess. Put my paper towel down. I really want to get that, that stuff off of there. Another thing you can do is just dump it in the water, wash it off in there too. Water is hot. I forgot about that. Okay. Dry that bad boy off. I can go ahead and take the gloves off. Now, if I were not of the one-time use only club, I would go ahead and put this solution into a container and save it for next time, but since I'm not, I'm going to go ahead and pour it down a drain with PVC. Which actually doesn't go out to the street, it just goes out to a collection area for me. I don't like to pour my chemicals down the drain. Okay. So what do we have here? We have a nice PCB board with all of the copper etched off of it, really easy, and um, all of the tracings in here. And I'm, I'm, my only concern is down in this area here, but we're going to see how that turns out once we do the next step. Our favorite friend, acetone. Well, and a steady roll of paper towels. So, that's what your your friends here. Hold them up, however you want to do it. I like the nice small pieces. Pop this guy open. A little on here goes a long way and just do a wipe in one direction. That's all you need. 
don't go and try and clean it off and polish it because what will happen is it will smear the toner and it will make your board dirty and it will look like butt. <laughs> can't stand the look of that dirty board, you know? Just say it happens here too. It smears at the very end. I don't know if that can is viewable on there. Yeah, I see that smear. I don't like it, but it happens. Sun. On the other side. And after that, we have one nice looking. PCB board. There we go. Now it's time to build.